Okay, so we're taking Whiskey out on the trail to try to do his canter there because that's where his owner's going to be cantering the most. You'll see you have a mounting block by the trailer because when you trailer out, that's usually how you get on. So you want to get your horse used to doing that. I taught him to sidle up. Oh, and now he just comes to the mounting block and so I don't have to do anything. I'm going to get on. So he just lined himself up because he would rather do that than get tapped, which is good. Oh. And now I see I'm missing my strap for my vest, so I'm going to get back off. And then uh, we'll do it again. Good job, buddy. He's like, oh, nice practice. So he was a good boy, but we're going to repeat it. So this horse stood by the mounting block when he came, but not very good. He always walked off and did stuff or went sideways. So now he doesn't do it anymore because I spent a, ton, a lot of time practicing, practicing getting on and off. If I'm going to sidle up, I always put the reins over their head ahead of time so I'm not fussing once I get up on the mounting block. And I like to just get up there. You can line them up, but I just like to get up there and pull them up. Oh, good oh boy. But I did give him treats, but I only did it once I got on his back. And you'll see now, this is the second time I'm just getting on him because I forgot my strap here. And so, if we did this well, he should just stand here. But it's different in the arena than it is on the trail. They're confined in the arena, not on the trail. And so you got to practice it everywhere. And expect that you start in the arena where it's safe. And then, and then you practice it out here. So the day you do trailer out, then it's not a problem. No grass. Everything's follow through. When they do something wrong, you might have to practice 20 times. Uh, 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 stay. So see how he's trying to walk them? I'm trying to tighten my pants. Oh, that's pretty good. So you make them stay, but you know, each horse is different. Some try to rear up and stuff. That's why if you know how to do the turn on the forehand, it's helpful. So we're gonna take him out alone. I don't know if he's ever been out alone. So I have my stick and spurs for backup in case I need it. And um, we'll just see how it goes. But remember, you gotta practice stuff with your horse. They don't understand everybody you know the owner's different than the trainer so they get confused so we got someone working on landscape down here i have the color of rains on you see he's kind of reacting you can't see it the guy has black on he's in green grass and remember how i said the horses don't see the same of us so it's blurry to him he's trying to look with his left eye and he's trying to look with his right eye so i might get up here stop and just let him take a look because he's a little anxious and you'll see him turn his head see now he's looking with his right eye Good job, buddy. And he's gonna look with his left eye. So again, I can see the guy because I'm looking straight at him, but he can't. So I'm gonna wait until I don't think he cares anymore. He starts to eat grass and then I know it's okay to go. But as we get closer, his vision will change and it might look different to him. So he might want to stop again. If this is, was his 20th time out going on the trail, I would not stop and do that. But this is his first time here. Good oh boy. My hands are wide. I'm in the red. Hi. <laughs> You're okay. Good job. Good job. So scratch them. Don't oh, they do a good job when they try. And yeah, keep after them when they don't. He's a little high-headed, but his gait's okay right now. He's just nervous, but there's people in these flowers picking, and he won't be able to see them well, because for some reason they like to wear red shirts in the green brush. So he's going out, but he's definitely nervous, so I'm going to try and give him something to do to focus him on something else. And I'm sitting back, because you never know if they're going to spin if a bird flies out of the bush. So you sit back. You try to stay relaxed. You breathe. I'm breathing because I'm talking. Now, as I go ahead, there's a mucky part to take these horses through. This is his first time out here. I don't think I'm going to take him through that muck. Okay. Because I don't want to make this scary for him. So the first time out should not be a super steep, scary trail ride for the horse. And this horse has been on trails, but I doubt he's been totally by himself. I'm going to sneak up here. Oh boy. Now remember, there's people over on the right. You probably can't see them either. 
but I can see their little ATV over there somewhere else. But he's gating well, but we're going uphill and that naturally puts your horse on his back end. He's a pacey horse, so that helps this horse, a trotty horse that might make a trot more. So with him, it puts him on his back end and he's gonna gate pretty good except there because he got nervous and he shot forward. So I just held and waited till he came back to his gate. Uh, the owner wants to check how he was with this bit on the trail. So far I have pretty good control, but we'll see. Going up a hill when you first come out is a great thing if you have an energetic horse because it'll help pick some energy off. I don't want to come out here with people that are going fast or crazy if I'm trying to work on their gait or I'm trying to work on their canner because it's not going to work out well. It's better if I come alone or just one person and then that I lead so I can control the speed to help my horse's gait. Again, I'm working on his canter, so I would have loved to come out and cantered up this. It's his first time, and we just got out here. Last thing I need is me to be cantering and a guy to jump out of the bush. So always be aware of your surroundings, what's safe to do, what's not safe to do. If you come out to canter, but the you know, trail's crazy that day, you just don't do it. Okay, now he's a little pacey. Oh, I've got a serpentine. He thinks there's a monster in the woods, and he, he might be right came out the other day, the horses were a little spooky, we didn't know why, and I came up on another horse and a bobcat jumped down on me. So they were right. Okay, so this has some stairs that help separate the PC horse's legs, so that's good. And he's a little forward, which is fine, but I don't want to come out and run him real fast because I don't want to teach him that. Okay, good job, buddy. So, usually this horse puts his head too high right now. It's, I mean, too low. He usually puts his head too low. Right now it's a little too high. So, also since he's not paying attention, I'm half halting. But I'm going to slide the bit across his tongue, which means I'm going to squeeze one hand. My right hand, release it. Squeeze my left hand, release it. Squeeze my right hand, release it. Squeeze my left hand, release it. That massages the bit across their tongue. So it helps to bring their head down, but it also helps to get their attention and it usually helps to uh, calm them down some, so it's a good technique to have. It's very narrow right here. I'm letting him put his head down because I want him to see that and get us through there, okay? So with a horse that's pacey and he just learned to canter, we don't want to canter on the flat because it's not going to be good unless I'm just cantering like one step and that's it. You got to canter hills, and then when they can canter hills, you try to do it on the flat. But that's why I like to keep them in the arena for a while, like you know, three months working on their canter, so then I can canter some on the flat. But the trotty horses can just canter off on the flat and hold their canter. The PC horses will canter a couple of steps and fall apart. That's normal until they get the strength and understand what to do. Really, that was wet. I've got the camera there. Okay. Also, you don't want to canter around blind turns or go fast around blind turns in case something jumps out, like a bike or a person, because of course your horse will spook and you might not go with it. All right, so he's a little excited. I'm going to try and canter one step and we'll see what he does. I'm going to do his bad lead, left, calf halt, shift weight to the right, right leg canter, canter, canter. No, nope, he didn't do it. Now I'm not going to stop him back up because he's amped up, so if I do, he might um, rear up, so I'm just going to try it again. Same thing, half hold, shift my weight. Canter. Oh boy, good oh boy. Okay, so he tried to get it. That's all I want in the beginning is him to try because then we were going downhill and I'm going to serpentine again. Good boy. So he's quite nervous out here by himself. Um, and that's normal. A horse that's ridden with other horses and then they go by himself. He's like, I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to do out here. Okay. But for the canner, I just wanted him to try and understand that's his bad lead. That's why I'm trying to do it first. So he's a little on the pacey side, but that's because of nervousness. So I can't totally fix that because this is his first time out here. So until his nerves get better. Okay, so now I'm going to try another step if we can. So I'll try to fill that. Canner. 
Now we didn't get it and he's too concerned with what's in front of us, so that's okay. Now we're going downhill, so I can't do it again. It's hard if you can't get that horse's attention, right? So I, I wasn't positive if he was ridden alone, but I am now. At least on this trail, he's never been alone. So he's kind of going fast and that's when they get trippy, so I did hold on from there. And when I can't, I don't want to gallop because he's already revved up, so I just want to do a step or two and then come to a walk. I always turn him sideways when I'm going to do it, so it's home and she turns him sideways, he might think he's supposed to camper. Okay, so there's a little walk here. Canner. Go oh boy. So two crappy steps, one good canter step, and then crappy steps. That's normal. So you know, go boy. Good job. I'm not gonna scratch him or anything because he's amped up. I reach for it, he might go fast. So while he's fresh, I'm gonna try cantering on his bad lead, his left lead. Then we'll switch to his right one, which is his better lead. So now we got a long uphill. So I'm going to try. He slow down. Canner. No, he didn't get it. So I slow him down again. Canner. He got it. He's on his left lead. His bad lead. The front and the back, but it's a little jarring with his big back end. Good boy. What a good job. But he did it. Good job. So if I cantered off and then yanked on his mouth because it was bouncy, then he'll, you know, get upset. He tried to do the right thing and then he gets yanked on for doing it. And the horse starts having a temper tantrum and leaping and bucking. So you gotta know, and that's why it's best to practice it in the arena where it's safe first. Right. Now coming home, I'm not gonna canter. He's already amped up. So coming home, cause this is out and back, he's gonna be amped up more. So if I do camera, it'll only be steps and far away from the barn. Easy. Now this is a blind turn, so he might not want to canter, but I'm gonna try. So I'm gonna turn him sideways. Ah, ah. Good boy. Canter. There he's got it. Good boy. Oh. So just a couple steps he when he canter off, he got the wrong lead behind, which I could feel. Then he switched it. I didn't get after him or anything. He switched to himself. And then I pulled them back after a step or two. So you want them just thinking the canter's not a big deal, not that you get to hills and race up. That's how you get a crazy horse. You keep cantering up the same hills fast. They get insane. They get to the bottom and they start rearing up. And if you don't go, you're gonna have high hill silver. So it's best to just canter steps here and there. Just once in a while and it's quiet and you know you can do it. And you just tell your friend behind you, hey, you just keep gating. Don't gallop up behind me because my horse is going to take off if you do that. Just nice, slow canter steps. Okay, so now we got another canter coming up. And I never take off. I always cue them. So then in time, they just canter off slowly. Ah, ah, he's already trying. because this is a hard hill. Good job. So very nice canter. So that was all his left lead. So I have a couple more hills. And now I'm going to try for his right lead. So when I first do it, I'm going to serpentine. See how he's amped up? But I'm out here cantering and he's nervous. And I, by cantering, I'm bringing his epinephrine and his adrenaline up. Okay? Um, so the serpentine just helps me get control. That's why I always do this in the arena. So when I try for the other lead, he might be confused and not do it, so we'll just see. When they're thinking clearly, you can do different leads on all the different hills. And you can practice simple changes on any S turns. You know, you just come back to a walk and change their lead. So then your horse learns to canter slowly, balanced and calm in time. Each horse is different depending on their personality. Some are naturally calm, some are naturally fast. 
when I turn around to come home, he might think he's supposed to canter every hill because that's what I'm doing right now to practice. So now I'm going to turn the other way, more to the left, and then left leg canter. Canter. Oh, there he kind of took off, pulled on him, and he picked up his left lead, not his right lead, which I was trying for. That's okay. Okay, because this is his first time, so we just want him to canter. And we want him slowly shortening up. Uh, it's best to go up the hill a little bit before you ask for the canter. Don't ask for it right on the bottom. See how he's getting amped up. I'm going to turn him the other way because it's harder for them to get faster halfway up. Now he's got the right lead. See how I did that? I aimed for the bumps to kind of block us. And I did not canter off at the bottom because as he gets more amped up, if I take off at the bottom, he's going to be like, adios. And so I'm trying to do it halfway up. So he uh, can't get as much speed. He's trying to make it safe for you and safe for him. But he rocked way back, so... I want the right lead, so I have to turn him. So see, I got him turned. I'm not asking for the canter yet. There's a big rock here. Okay, now I'm gonna ask. Canter, canter. Huh, he got the wrong lead behind, but that's okay. All right, now we're all the way to the top. So no more cantering. I'm just gonna walk a little bit and then we'll see how he does as I turn around and go back. It's very difficult for horses to go out and back. And that's this trail. It amps a lot of horses up. When you go out and make loop trails, that's much easier on the horse's brain. He's staring at these black things. It's okay. Good boy. But see, I know something jumps out behind those black things. He's going to spook. So you get your feet in the stirrups, you sit back, and you be ready. And uh, good job. It's okay. See how he got fast? Just find the bit. Okay. I'm gonna go over here. See if I can look at this stuff and stand for a second. Good job. So he just wants to run by those things. He doesn't want to see them. And I want to be like, no, it's okay. I don't want you to run. You'll see, I'm usually in the red if the horse is bad, but now I'm in the yellow. Breathe. You're okay. Good job. Side the bit. Keep your horse straight. Keep breathing. Like that. It works only through your mouth. If you do it through your nose like this, the horses don't feel it as much. You do it through your mouth, even if you're petrified, the horse goes, I think she's not scared. Even though she's sick and she doesn't feel like she's scared up there. So I think I'm okay. Okay, now going down these hills, now that I amped him up, it be hard. So if he's fast, I might walk, stop. If it feels like that's going to make him rear up, I'm not going to do that anymore, then I'll just serpentine. If he goes down slower, then we're okay. A little fast, a little pacey. I am holding him a fair amount. I see the edge, so I'm going to get the hell away from the edge. So let's go over to the right. Don't ever be by the edge if you don't have to. When you're riding them, especially me or you, if you have horses like this you're training, working with, or riding your friend's horse, you always assess the environment. Where, What are you dealing with? And how safe can you be? So I want to be where there's... Something happens, I got some room. So in the middle, not right on the edge if possible. I would you know, take this horse on a single track and be trying this stuff, because look at him. He's not paying attention to his feet, so the tricky horses, you know, if your horse is like this, this is why, because he's not paying attention. He's just amped up and he wants to go home. That's normal. But when he gets there, he's gonna get tied up. And I would, if I was riding him up here all the time, that's what I would do. This young horse, it's not his fault. Okay, people forget that. He's six or seven, I don't know, something like that. That means he's like 21. He just got to the drinking age. Okay, 
Now I'm sideways, not because I want to canter. I was trying to slow him down. So if you know how to leg yield and side pass, you can make your horse go sideways down some of this stuff, and it helps. The hard thing is, if I go sideways, he might think he's going to canter. So that's why I like to use that word. I'm not saying that word. At least not again. And I'm just going to serpentine easy. Breathe. Good job, buddy. No. So if they're going up fast, don't lean forward and help them. Make it harder and just kind of sit there. Because you're trying to slow them down, not help them go faster. Good job. So now he actually just slowed down a little bit. Good job, buddy. Yeah. See his head coming down? Good job. There we go. So now I actually could loosen on the reins for a second. So he's done pretty well gait-wise. He's just fast and he's just gotten pacey when he's nervous. But otherwise, his gaits are better out here because he, um, the terrain is helping him and he's happier out here. He doesn't like the arena. But you have to do it to help you get safe. Now he just tried to bulge over to the right, and since I know how to leg yield and side pass, I blocked him with my right ring and right leg. If I didn't know how to do that, he might have taken me off the edge of that trail. Now I'm serpentine, because this is helping me with the train. I got all my weight in my legs. I'm really not sitting in the saddle right now, because I'm freeing up his back to go down the hill. I'm just kind of standing up about an inch. So now when you get a wider spot like this, if you're going fast, you just serpentine back and forth. You, if the footing's bad, that's okay. You just don't want it dangerous bad. But then they gotta pay attention more. See over here, it could dip down. He can't see it. I can't see it progress. Okay, now he slowed down. Good job, buddy. Oh boy. I'm still not leaning forward. Oh boy. So this is why uh, it's good, to, you know, if you can to do it alone when I'm doing all that cantering stuff. What if I had a horse behind me that now was amped up or in front of me dancing around? It would be very hard for me to control this horse right now. Okay. So, if they're behind me, it's better. And if you have a calm one or one that will just gate out there or canter slow, that's great. If you're going out with a friend and their horse canters fast, ask them not to canter because you don't want your horse to feed off of them and think that's the right answer. So I'm still serpentining. And serpentine is very helpful, but it's not helpful if you never practice it and don't know how to do it. It's the same thing with the one rain stop. If you don't practice it, your horse forgets and it might not work very well. Uh, I'll talk about the one rain stop for a second. So right here, it'd be fine. If he took off, I could do a one rain stop. But up there where it was a big drop off of the side, I'd be very careful about doing it. I might rather run up that hill and then get up there and try the one range stuff because you don't want to spin and go off the trail. Okay, so always assess where you're riding and what you're dealing with. So see, I have bushes on the left, but I know after those bushes, it's a drop off. So if you did something, I got about four feet on that side. I have a lot more on my right side. So if something happens and I can help it, I'm going to push him over to the right because then I have more room to work with. This is what a lot of people don't think about. I'm constantly looking what's around me in case something happens. So going down the hill, he's really swinging his butt because he's going fast. He's a little pacey. And that's, is there a pop cat in there? Um, that's why. Now, he just looked and told me something's in those bushes to the left. So he's probably right. It's probably either a bobcat or a deer. So I don't want to be on a loose floppy rain not paying attention in case he spins or something. Now he's going too fast. So squeeze, release, squeeze, release, squeeze, release, squeeze, release. I try not to hold constantly. I know he's trying to give in to them. But he is getting better. His head's much lower versus when we came out, okay? Now all these horses come in training and then you see their owners ride them. It's never the same. Because, again, I've taken tons of lessons, ridden tons of horses. I did hunter jumper, I did dressage. And most of these people come in, hey, they're just trail riders. They don't know any of the basic movements, how to balance their body and all those things. 
it's very helpful so we can get more out of the horse than people who don't know all that stuff because we know how to collect them i know how to balance my body over the horse to help him i know when to pull when not to pull and so when people make fun of other people like here how old and you're still taking lessons you take lessons forever i learn forever i'm a trainer I train other people but i still watch other trainers I watch all sorts of different disciplines because you pick different things up and you see how they handle the situation and maybe they got something better than I do and that's what I want to learn. So taking lessons forever is a good thing. You keep learning because you can get better. We've taught old horses how to canter so an old rider can still learn and become a better rider. You might have physical you know, disabilities that you have to work with and you might learn that from someone else like how they're dealing with it but a lot of this skating stuff if you're not balanced well you're sitting crooked you're pulling on the reins at the wrong time you're speeding up at the wrong time or you're bringing their head up or down at the wrong time that can make them not gait it can make them more scared you know, say you gallop at free hill because someone told you to do that to teach the canner oh they might canner but you're just teaching your horse to be nuts <laughs> Don't canter every hill. And I did it today because I'm uh, checking with him what he can do, but otherwise I would alternate hills, you know, walk up one, canter another, gate another. So your horse just doesn't know and they wait for your cue and they don't get all amped up. I try never to do it going back towards home. It makes a huge difference. It's gonna be a long video. All right. So we're almost back to the turn now. He keeps speeding up and when he speeds up, he's getting a little pacey. That's okay, because again, that part is anxiousness. I can slow him down, but I can't like fix his gait today on this. Hey, so that's for him, not for you. Now I'm signing the pick because he's going fast and we've got to go through that narrow part. Now I'm going to do it harder because I was doing it with my hands and he's not responding. So now I'm using my whole arm. But if I stop and try to get this horse to walk slow, it's not gonna happen today. It's just gonna turn into a big fight with head chucking. So yeah, we didn't pay attention, so we didn't pick up his feet there. Nothing's wrong with him. It's just he's not paying attention, focused on home. So right here, it's narrow, trying to help him. But he's going fast. You just try to keep your body out of the way. So if they trip in those things and fall sideways, which he definitely could have done, then I stay up here and then he gets his feet back. Okay, so I let go of the reins for a second. But see how he's speeding up? We don't want to do that. Everybody's concerned with riding on a loose rein, dropping the reins, having them do all this stuff. You can't do that when your horse is not used to the trails and is hyper. He works with the calm ones or the ones that have been out here a while. So just know that in time you will be able to loosen up more, but not all of them, all of the hot ones. You got to give and take, give and take. We're going down steps right now. He's not paying any attention. I know that, so it's going to be trip. It's different. So now I'm going to take him through the muck on the way back. So when you have hard things to go through on the way back, it's much easier because they want to go home. Now as I get down here, there's a tree that they cut and it looks really weird. And so he might get down here and slam on the brake, so that might slow him down for me too. And now I'm serpentine down in the hill. He used to cut. We'll see if the camera is jarring. but. He's pacing. It's not a hard pace. It's more like a step pace, but it's, there's a bump in it. Nothing I can do, really, except ride this out today and serpentine down the hill. You know, if he was here many more months, we could work on it, but you can't always do that. And training is expensive. Horses are expensive, so you just try to get the horse a little better, and then you try to work on it as much as you can on your own and just know it might take longer to get there but that's okay there's there's no rush so i'm watching the terrain he's young and pacey so i'm picking the footing i'm not letting him go where he wants because again i can see straight ahead i can see that trail better than he can so here's the tree he's looking at it 
you're not doing anything, but if the bird flies out on you, watch out. You see, he hasn't slowed down at all. Okay, so he's going to see all these other horses. What do you know? He slowed down a little bit. Now I have to steer him through all this muck. Good job. And it's hard because there's water on both sides. It's really mucky and I'm trying to stay in the middle. So that's why it's important to be able to steer your horse in a straight line. So practice that in the arena. Because if you can't do it in there, there's no way in hell you're going to do it out here. <laughs> okay, so we made it. He's still amped up, but not bad. Usually once you get into the barn, all of a sudden the horse is like, oh, I'm settled. I'm like, well, that's great. But what we're going to do is practice his canter some more at the barn because I don't want to get him back to the barn and he thinks there's no work. So I'm going to take him in that round pen. I'm going to canter him until it's pretty decent and then he's going to be tied up for a while. Because okay. again, I don't want him to think we come back to the barn and it's a fun thing. I'm going to think, oh, well, you got back to the barn sooner, good, because I had some more work for you and now. We have lots of time to do it because we came home so fast. So that's fantastic whiskey. Okay. Now we're looking to see if that guy's still here. There he is. He's on the right, but he's got a dark shirt on and he's in the green. So all this horse sees is something blurry with black on moving. Okay. Thank you. Yes. They always skate. Look how well he's skating. They always do that back to the barn. Like, look at me. I can gate so well. It's because he's going somewhere he wants to. You know where I want to go? Straight to this front of him. So this is a nice smooth gait. He's shaking his head. So it's a nice running walk. If he stops shaking his head and it's smooth, that's a racking gait. Now he's pacing, because now he sees the round. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so let's see if we can open the door on you. It's much nicer if I don't have to get off. Oh, my stick is stuck. Look at that. Oh, you don't want to go in, do you? So see, he didn't want to go in here. So I'm going to go his worst way first. That's to the left. Most round pens are like this. They're not even. So this is going downhill right here. So that would not be a good place to canter because that'll make him pacey. Once we get by this open door, it goes uphill. So that would be a good place to canter because that'll help our canter, okay? So when we come around again, I'm going to ask for the canter. It's very hard when you're doing this and you're nervous. Everybody pulls on their mouth so they don't can. So we'll see. Try to slow it down because you want to try and get it slow from a slow walk so they're not pacey at all. I'm going to turn them a little sideways. Half halt, shift my weight, canter. Good boy. Walk. So I'm pulling before we get downhill. Now I'm just going to walk a circle. Good job. So that's his bad lead. And what he did, he rocked back. He got the correct lead in the front, but he got the wrong lead in the back. And then I didn't pull on him really. I just kind of held very, very lightly and just waited for him to switch his back lead. Because now he knows he's just not strong enough to hold it. But he got it. And then we cantered a couple steps and we walked. Now we stop when they're doing the right thing. Now we're going to try it again. So I'm going to slow down, make him go sideways, canter correctly now. In the beginning it was wrong. Good job. Now we're going to walk. So he's anticipating and he's just trying to take off when he wants to. And what he did when I just tried was he tried to do it from a pace. And I'm like, no, because that is much harder for them to get the correct lead. So I try to do it from a walk. I like to do things in three. So if he does this one correctly, then we're going to go the other way. If he does it wrong, then we're going to keep going until he does it right. See now how he's getting tired though? So 
Turn it a little sideways. Wah. Canner. The boy. Now his departure wasn't as good, but his canner was good. So guess what? Since I know he can get another one better, I'm going to try again. And what I'm going to do is pass the door and go up a little bit more before I ask him. Because I was asking on the bottom, and maybe there's too much of a dip, and that's what's making him pacey. So, see, it's still going downhill. Still going downhill. Now it starts going uphill. Turn him sideways, half off canner. Good job, Whiskey. Good boy. Okay, now we're going to walk. We're going to walk once around, and then we're going to go the other way. Leaving the door open is not always good for most people. It's fine for me because I can steer, but a lot of people's horses would try to run out there. Okay, now we'll go the other way. So to the right, this arena is better and he's more balanced. So when he goes to the right, it goes downhill a little bit. Not yet, this is still uphill. You're okay, there's chickens and goats and people on the other side of this fence. This might he just spooked. So I don't want to ask for the counter now that he's amped up. I'm going to walk around a couple of times and wait for him to go back down because he got scared. That's normal. He can't see what's on the other side of this wall. So breathe. I'm going to bring his head down a little. Good job. Oh boy. So he's gating just fine. I'm not worried about his gait right now, but he's doing a good job. So now he's more relaxed, okay? So the next time I pass that door, then I'm going to start to ask him to canter. Easy. There he got a little antsy. So right now it's going downhill, so I'm not going to ask him now. Now I'm going to turn a little sideways. Half fault. Nope. Shift your weight. Canter. Lost his lead. The boy. Wah. I'm kind of in a little bit of a two point to get off his back to help him while he's learning. So now I went farther because that's his better lead, and this direction in the round pen is actually easier footing wise. There's more uphill versus downhill in this direction. I would never notice that when I did 100 jumpers or dressage, I would have. No clue, but since I do baited horses, I know every incline and decline. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna try it again once he gets past this. I'm gonna turn a little to the left. Half ball, shift and wait. Canner. He got it. I'm in a little bit of a two point, that way it's not bumping me either. Good boy. Ball. Now the reason I walked there, it's all about timing. I thought he did pretty good. It felt like he was getting a little tired. And so I want to stop while he's doing the right thing, not the wrong thing. There he just paced a little bit because he was with speed here. So Whiskey, if you do it one more time, we're done. But then you get to be tied up. You can always really aim for the wall. That helps with some of them, like Tilly. Canner. It's a nice departure. I'm at a little bit of a two point, so I'm trying to hold myself in my thighs. But I'm not leaning forward. He lost his lead. Now we got it again. Okay, he's tired. Walk. Job. So don't go right out the door because then next time you canter in here, and that door's open, they'll try to run out after they're done cantering. So what I'm going to do, I want to get off here and not at the barn. This, so this is the reward. Whoa. So stand. Good job. So I drop the rein so he knows he's done because we always do that when he's done. Now I'm going to get off and then I'm going to loosen the girth here. Because that's a reward for doing the camp for me. So loosen it, but just a couple of holes so it doesn't fall off your horse. Overall, for the first time out, if that was by himself, I think he did phenomenal, just so you know what I think is good, because it's difficult for a horse. Oh, a little tight, let's do this. Um, he, he was fast, but he did his canter well. He did everything I asked, and he didn't kill us. 
Now we have a nose band on him because he kept opening his mouth and putting his tongue over the bit and all this crazy stuff. We tried different bits. He has a very mild bit in his mouth, even though it's a wonder bit. And I'll show you if this recorder doesn't run out. Uh -uh. So I'm going to take my stick so if he gets in my space, I can get after him. So we put the nose band on and you got to put it on, get back, tight enough, because if you don't, there's no purpose in it. So nose band holds the horse's mouth shut. In English, we used to ride with them all the time. I never even knew what they were for when I was a kid. Uh, but that's what it does. It closes their mouth so they can't open it up and get their tongue over the bit. Um, kind of those spade bits with the big ports in them do that as well because they can't get their uh, tongues over it. Just so if you've ever seen a Peruvian with those things. Um, so we tried all these different bits, very mild. He did it, everything from the snaffle with the miler, all that different stuff. So... That means it's more of a habit. We checked his mouth, made sure everything was okay. It wasn't poking him. This means he did that somewhere and got relief. So it became a habit, just like cribbing does. So now we're tying his nose shut and that should be tied like that for the next six months to a year to make sure that habit's gone. And then she can start loosening it up. And if he's not opening his mouth, then over time she can make it looser and then she can just take it off. But you have to remember, once a horse builds a habit, it's not gone in a day. It takes a fair amount of time for it to go away. So this is the bit. It's all slimy right now. This, I think, is called the moon. But see, it's got all these independent parts, so it's, it gives him lots of room. It moves, so he can't lean on it, but it also gives his tongue lots of room. Ew, gross. <laughs> And so it's actually a pretty mild bit. If you hook your reins here, it's, I don't know if it's in the video, but then it's a snaffle. So you could ride it if you wanted a snaffle in the arena, you hook the reins here. And then if you want uh, a little shank effort, then you put it here. But it's actually a pretty mild bit. And, uh, but it helps you. The reason I use this is because he leaned on the bit. So it helped to get his head up. That's why I went to the wonder bits with him. And then he went to more of this mild mouthpiece because he kept putting his tongue out no matter what it we tried. So that's what I would recommend for him now as long as she has enough control. I did, but, you know, everybody's strength is different. Okay, overall, Whiskey did well. It would be great if he was ridden alone some to build up his confidence in himself. But sometimes people don't do that. That's okay. And uh, overall, for not knowing how to canter well and now being able to canter some in the arena, canter some in the round pen, and uh, canter on the trail in just two months' time with a very pacey horse that has long legs in the back. That's why he's always parked out like this, because that's comfortable for him because his legs are so long in the back and he's kind of built downhill. I think he's doing fantastic. It's just continuing the practicing, not confusing him, and, uh, you know, not galloping him out there and making him nuts. Okay, that's it for today.